Welcome everybody. Hi, welcome to this episode of Monsters Inc. Hi, bought this top in uh, Bangkok and I thought, perfect, one day I'll do a talk about Monsters Inc. So, I mean, I ask myself sometimes why I even bother with the amount of abuse I get from making these videos these days, but it's still something inside me, I guess same with you, something inside you when you see something's wrong, something needs to be spoke about. You speak your truth and then it seems to be an avalanche of negativity. Um, a bit like, you know, like what is Monsters Inc? It's a really, really great question. What does it mean? What is Monsters Inc? Um, I'm not somebody who points fingers at um, and generalizes at people, but have you ever ever been in front of a guy who's given you a parking ticket and you might have paid for the parking ticket and you might show him the parking ticket and he's not really interested and he just looks at you and says well it's not my issue you know um, I can see you've got the parking ticket but you're gonna have to take it out you're gonna have to go through the authorities and go through the procedures and and he can see you getting stressed and he's not budging his energy isn't changing he isn't getting emotional is just almost like enjoying the moment, literally. And the more frustrated you're getting because your consciousness is not understanding why he doesn't understand you and doesn't understand logic and doesn't understand and appreciate that you are an empath and you are trying to explain yourself in a loving way and yet he is so disconnected to what you are connected to that your consciousness you are almost confused because your brain just doesn't understand how another human being isn't interacting in the same way you are isn't feeling con uh, the, the, the feelings that you're feeling isn't feeling the empathy so you start to get even more frustrated and 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 the energy that you create as you're doing this knowing that but this is wrong. I, I paid for my parking ticket. The, you know, it isn't, you know, I'm not late or whatever it is. And he's just stood there and it's almost like he's not affected. But actually, when you really stand back and look at it, he's loving every single moment of it. Or she, they're really enjoying it. Now, I'm not saying not all of them. There's some who are lovely, but there are some who feed, feed, from this. So when you look at Monsters Inc, and we'll do a deep dive today if that if that's okay with you. I mean there will be some noise next door, but it's okay. We'll 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 get through it. Monsters Inc was a, a pre-program. It, it was basically telling us how the world works and what it feeds from. So in Monsters Inc, if you've never seen it, it's a group of monsters that go through doors and enter into children's bedrooms and go up to them and scream and make noises and then the children just screams out of fear and then they fill up bottles of their energy it's their essence and then they go back and that feeds the system and that's their job and literally monsters inc when you become a healer and you start to heal children and adults and you see uh, energy and you understand energy you smile and you you go monsters inc was absolutely a pre-program it was it was a, a telegram it was telling us what they do and the darkness has to tell you uh, it's part of their um their code uh, it's almost a, a double whammy really it's a bit like the traffic warden he knows that you might be uh, telling the truth but it doesn't matter he's still gonna say that you have to go through all these procedures and, and it's your fault, not his, and he's just doing his job. And predictive programming and, and the way they share these things uh, with us is a way to release them from their spiritual burden, what they believe. I'm not so sure about that. I don't think it really makes that much difference whether they do or they don't. Personally speaking, I'm not that much into the religious side of it, the occult side to it. I just think that's just a... Uh, something that they use as a, a great excuse so if you ask me what that all that means it means that they're just laughing at us and they enjoy the joke in front of our faces so 
So, yeah, I bet I, I better start at the very beginning. At 38 years old, I became a healer and started to understand energy within people around them. And I started to really take an interest of understanding how energy works. And it took me up until this day to really truly understand what I know now. And what I know now is, is probably a grain of sand on a beach. But I still understand enough to be able to point out certain things that you might think, wow, never thought about that, never thought about it like that. The reason why I think about it like that is because I've spent 20 years in a little healing room and in this room healing people day to day and seeing their energy and seeing how it changes, how it shifts when they come into the room, what's going on, why they're different. I spend days when I'm outside four years ago seeing everybody coming away from the stations when they've all been jabbed and seeing their energy and it's erratic and it's going crazy and like, and, and if I'm in a room full of people, I can feel jealousy, that's an energy. I can feel depression, that's an energy. I can feel anger, I can feel joy. And these are all energies. So there was a, a, a genius once that says, if you want to understand the world, you have to see it all as energy. And this is so true because everything is energy. So every thought that you have is an energy. If you see an energy as a ball with a little uh, a spike on it, then that's one energy. If you see happiness as, as, as you know, smiley faces in that energy, that's an, what I'm trying to say is that energy shift, shifts and changes depending on what your energy is. So it's a bit like frequencies. Um, it's been shown that music has energy and um, it has, it, it, if you put that music through a certain drum and put sand on that drum, you'll, you'll find it's got um, beautiful shapes and they're all, they're all phenomenal these shapes but if you just imagine that as I see energy as different shapes different colors sometimes uh, whether it's darker lighter whether it looks like a cloud whether it looks like it, it like almost like lightning strikes at times but more subtle than that and so on and uh, smoke Clouds is, is probably the, the rightest way because it looks like a cloud leaving and sometimes coming into the body. That's all energy around us and within us. So what is Monsters Inc? Why do I wear this top today? Why am I talking about energy? Well, when a client walks through the door and they're of good energy, you see that they have this, this like ready break. If you're from England, um, there used to be a cereal called ready break and the little boys would walk along the street and they'd have this glow around them. And if you sit long enough and if you work hard enough, you sometimes can see this energy. The energy that I speak about is one which is around all uh, of these bodies that we, um, we sit inside. And if you look around trees, mountains, um, flowers, um, uh, fruits and vegetables on trees, there's a life force. This is chi, prana, or the energy around us, aura, whatever you want to call it. But it's a force that when you die is no longer there. So that life force is interesting to me and I want to understand that life force. So why is that, that man who comes to me, why is his life force very, very, very strong, very powerful, very, you can feel it almost when he comes into the room, he knocks you out with it. So you find out that this guy is healthy, he works out, his beautiful family life, has no stress, has a great business, doing really successful. And um, wow, your thoughts and feelings are really positive. And all true. I didn't even need to ask him. I could just feel. He has no issues at all, which is very rare. That energy is so powerful, it's unreal. I'd love to be able to get to that energy one day. But I'm not there yet, even as a healer. So the next person who comes in is a lady around about 50 years old. And her energy is almost disappeared. There, there hardly is any energy on her at all. She looks like she's aged uh, from last time I see her, uh, saw her, and she looks weak. She she can't walk properly. Um, and her, her energy is just, it's almost like there isn't anything left. 
So I can feel that on her. And she, she then explains afterwards that she's been abused by her husband, she's lost a job, and, and so on. It gets worse. So you can see that the energy is vital to knowing as a healer what state you're in. So when you understand this, you understand that energy is everything because if you haven't got a good energy, you're not gonna be fit and healthy and feeling good. So how do you get a good energy? To tr well, it's, it's obvious really because I've just explained you've gotta have a good environment, you've gotta eat well, you've gotta be successful in your, your mind, body and thoughts, successful in, in everything. I don't mean about wealth, I mean successful in meditation, successful in happiness, joy, friendship, um, and everything, everything that you do, that's a success to be able to grow your energy. Not just watching TV and watching somebody score a goal and feeling excited for a few seconds, then it disappears. That's not, that's not energy, that's just a quick burst and it's gone very quickly. So you have to understand that when you're working as a healer, what you're trying to do is give back that energy. You're trying to put the energy back into that client so you might you know, clear away the negativity that's attached to them. We'll talk about that in a bit. But ultimately, at the end of the healing session, they get up and they've got a little bit more energy. They've got an, a new aura around them and they look better and they feel better and they smile and they say, I don't feel as heavy today. That's right, because we've cleared your energy away, which is the negative energy that is attached to you because of all the people that have caused you the pain and suffering. I've cleared your mind, which is causing you more issues because you're worried about everything. So now you've got free mind, your free thoughts, and you're, you're ready to fill it back up again. So now you've got a good energy, so it's up to you. So she goes away and whether she decides to keep that energy or whether she goes back into the same environments, eats the wrong foods, eats sugars and all that crap and drink alcohol and smoke, then she's gonna lower her energy again by doing all of those things and being beat by her husband again. So she goes back into that, that same environment, okay? So she, or she makes the choice and says, I don't need this anymore and I'm not putting up with this no more. So then she comes back to me again and see, oh, she's happier. Oh, why is she happier? But, well, because her energy is much bigger. So why, why is that? This is the questions that healers ask and try and understand through the years that they worked. Oh, you found out now that she's had a healing session and she opens up and says, you know, I, I couldn't cope being with this man anymore. I decided to make a, a break. I left him. It, my life's been so much better. I'm so much happier. I, I'm healthier. I'm going to the gym now. Uh, I've got new friends. Blah, blah. I'm like, wow, now I can understand. So I'm not telling you when I say to you, you need to do these things. What I'm sharing to you is what I saw my clients do to be able to then for me to think, wow, that really has worked. So I share that with you. That's all I'm doing. I'm not telling you I'm right or wrong. I'm just telling you what I experienced through my clients. So the other experience was this, this, this understanding of Monsters, Inc. Now, the idea of it just being children is profound, but it isn't just children. Energy is stolen from people all the time. And the analogy of this as a monster, as a happy thing, isn't really a happy thing. The monster which they're portraying, which they try to do in a gentle way to show you so it's easier for you to swallow and digest, is a happy monster, but what I know it as, as negative entities. Entities, attachments, and trap spirit. They're all very different, but they all do the very same thing. They feed from the essence of you. Now, the essence that they feed from is how you are. So they cannot feed from positivity. That's because your energy is strong and it's beautiful and these monsters don't come from the same place as you. But you have something that they can feed from and that is fear. So the whole world is constantly trying to make you fearful. And if you imagine that every single person in this world, okay, is a child and you imagine that the monsters are all around working at the highest levels, trying to bombard you through the phone, through the television, through the radio, through advertisements, through everything they can by wars and issues and problems and disease and new viruses scaring you all the time, then they know that they can lower your energy and change that energy to now a feeding energy. So you can produce two energies. One is pure love and healing. 
and the other one is fear. They feed from fear. Now, if you are in the energy of fear, they will be attracted to you. It's like if you've heard this idea of like attracts like, it's so true. So depending on what frequency you are vibrating at, depends on whether they come into your energy or try to get into your energy. It's very hard and they don't even want to come into your energy when you are vibrating at joy because that is like poison to them. They don't want to go anywhere near it. It's like touching a barbed wire, a barbed wire or an electric fence. They just can't penetrate that. So evil, darkness, satanic, all of these things are, are man-made produced to scare you from changing your energy from that beautiful glow that you have around you to fear and worry and what ifs and all the fear, fear, fear so that the energy depletes and changes. Once you change the channel from positive to negative, you then vibrate at a frequency that then gives off this food. It gives off this nectar. It's really a poison. As a healer, we see it as a poison. It looks like a dark cloud and it looks very, it's almost like you can cut it in half. And if you enter into that energy, you can feel it. It makes you feel low, it makes you feel sick, it makes you feel nauseous, depending on how bad you truly are vibrating at. And there's nothing worse when a child is vibrating at that because a child's energy is about, I would say, 10 times more powerful than yours. So when a child is sad, you can feel it. The whole room can feel it because it's so powerful. When an adult's sad, it's not as powerful, but it's still there to feed the monsters, the entities that you cannot see in this realm. So as a healer, we learn to feel, and sometimes we learn to capture a glimpse of these uh, entities and see them. I am different from most people, and I guess the next healer would say the same thing, but I feel as if I'm more of a feeler. I feel things like, what was that? I sometimes can hear things, um, but literally, I guess my my real work was actually working on clients who would come with um, extreme attachments, really bad ones, really awful attachments. At the time of over the years, I would never, I just, I didn't think it was necessary to talk about um, attachments or demonic energies or um, uh, trapped spirits, um, entities, and I, I just didn't feel it necessary. Why? One of the reasons was in my mind, I thought, what's the point talking about someone when it's gone? What, why tell them that? Because it's almost like bringing, bringing the pain back again and then after that beautiful healing session, you've put fear back into them. And actually, it's not important what I what I saw and what I felt. That's just ego. So, hey, it's clean. It's gone. What was it, Mark? It was just some negative energy. And that's how I treated my clients and how I used to say, right, be on your way and enjoy yourself. And you know where I am if you ever need me. That's it. That's all I ever said. I'm always here. Give us a cuddle. Take care. In those moments of, of severe um, attacks where my clients would be screaming and, and moving and, and you know saying weird things, um, funnily enough, it never felt difficult to me when I was dealing with these entities. It never felt challenging. I never felt worried. I never felt fear. And I guess part of me thought, well, if you feel fear, you're going to lose this battle anyway. It's going to stay there. And I, I didn't want to lose. I wanted to, to clear it. That's all what mattered to me. And one of the things, if you're a healer now watching this, this is quite profound, honestly. One thing I used to say inside me, because my thoughts are equally as powerful as what comes out of my mouth, my thoughts used to be, I ain't going nowhere, pal. Right? That's what I used to say, not to the lady, to the entity, to the energy what was there. I ain't going nowhere. And I'm just going to, I'll be here till you're gone. And I kept repeating this in my mind, and then my words would come there's no darkness that can that can uh there's no light that can uh, kill darkness you know there is no darkness that 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 can stay when light is is being penetrated and i kept repeating these different words and different sentences that would would confirm and reaffirm and and eventually it might be an hour it might be two hours but the client just 
goes into a breath of life. The breath of life comes back again. They're able to breathe again. And whatever that was has now gone, whether it's been depleted, whether it, the light has burnt it away, whether it's melted, whether it's rushed off and gone. There, there's so many reasons, but for me, it wasn't that important. It was something I, I wouldn't write down and be that interested in. What would be interesting is how my client would react when they got back up. And I haven't got a clue. I, I, you know, I'm new to this healing business at the beginning. It was only, I've only been in it five years. And I'm new to this, you know, d this kind of demonic energy that is attached. So my client would get back up and um, they would be fine. And it was like, they were, they, they were, it, prior to that, it was like they couldn't walk into the room. They had to have help. And then they'd walk out uh, feeling like they'd been through a battle. They'd been beaten up inside but they were relieved and they were like you know it's gone it's gone I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm me again so I'm like I clock all of that and get it and um, I guess I'd sit down by my tree I used I, I found a tree out of coincidence it was an old olive tree and I used to sit with the olive tree with my two schnauzers when I got home and when I was married then my wife would say how was your day and I'd say don't ask it was like you know and, it was just, it was strange. It was something that was, that I'd never known about in this world. And that's why I get a lot of bad messages, awful people saying some awful things who talk about religion, who talk about God, who talk about demons and all this, but have never really been a healer. So they're just saying things and like, you're just saying things, you know nothing because you haven't actually put the work in. Do 20 years of healing and then come back to me and chat with me. No problem, I'll talk to you. Because I know you'll have a different perspective on all of this. So sat by a tree trying to process what just happened. It was always evident to me that it wasn't that important. Because you're doing the job and you've done it. So that's it. Comes a point where after two decades you've finished doing the work. You want to share some truth at some point And you think, is it, is it, is it worth even mentioning this? So I never did for many years. I'd done 2,000 videos. Very rarely do I talk about, you know, um, exorcisms, entities, really. I don't really go into detail, but now's the time because there are more portals being uh, opened. There's more veils which are becoming so thin that they're broken and th there's so much happening right now and people are getting so much more uh, attachments and and this this feeding so, so most of us now are feeding the very energies that are coming through more and more so at one time when I was um, six years old up till 12 um, they, 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 there's always been cases of um, trapped spirit uh, which you know you would call ghosts or entity uh, ghosts or apparitions uh, that kind of phenomena and, um, you know, we've all heard about the ghost stories and things like that and whether we believe it or not. But for me, it was uh, waking up in the middle of the night at two o'clock in the morning and uh, knowing, uh, sometimes seeing um, a ghost uh, in the front of my bed. Uh, sometimes it was under my bed or under me. Sometimes it was pushing down on me so I couldn't breathe. Sometimes I would be in complete frozen mode. Uh, sometimes it would be at the back of me in the wardrobe or not in the wardrobe but where where the wardrobe was and I'd count to three um, and that was to to get enough courage to run out of the bedroom and run into my mum's bedroom and sleep with my mum and I did I'm not ashamed of saying it but nearly every night I ran into my mum's bedroom at two o'clock uh, I never told her so much she never really asked me because she didn't know what why but uh, maybe she just thought I, I just needed a cuddle, but I was petrified, I was petrified. And um, there was always something there. So it's not like, um, oh, you know, I knew this as a child or anything. I, I didn't even think nothing about it. And at 38, I became a healer and started healing people in a room and started seeing what was going on and realizing that we as 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 body suits this is your body suit it's not really who you are who you are is inside there which is the the flame that light i talk about that energy and aura and in the center of your heart which is basically the battery 
the spiritual battery that that uh, works with your consciousness and with the space suit that is who you are and that never dies so i'm not frightened of death at all i, I don't if i am going to die I'd, I'd rather not die of cancer and and feel the pain and suffering so what i do is eat uh, as much healthy foods that keeps cancer at bay and i'm very careful what i put in my mouth and very careful what i rub on my skin and so on. I'm very careful who I speak to, I'm very careful who I become friends with. All of these things are vital to keeping cancer at bay. So when you realize all of these things and you're working on your clients day by day by day, you start to see patterns of why people get sick. And there are so many reasons why people have dis-ease. There's so many reasons why people have mental health. And if we were just to touch on mental health, which I did on a, on a previous video and got bombarded with hate and people and, and I don't know what you want to call them, monsters coming and attacking, um, I, I had to take off the, um, the comments because they were so bad. And all I was doing was relaying what I believed is just everything is energy. And if you understand that everything is energy, then you'll understand when I talk about energy being the mental health is just energy that can move and shift, then it, it, it got a lot of people angry. They get angry because they're in a bad place themselves or they're living with somebody who's, in a, who's treating them bad, so then they're saying I'm all wrong and it's not like that. Well, that was just one aspect. There are thousands of aspects of a conversation. And because I don't hit your specific conversation, the ego and the anger in you attacks me and then I'm called the worst things. I'm called um, uh, dangerous. And I made a video this morning. I've never laid my hands on a child or my daughter. I love, I love my daughter and my son. I would never hurt anybody. I'm a healer. Now, is that what you call dangerous? Yeah, but your words are dangerous. Why don't you go and say that to a pedophile? Why don't you go and say that to somebody who sticks needles in people's arms and gives them uh, 26 years old or, or 18 and gives them myocarditis and falls around dead that day? Why don't you go and talk to them? Who's dangerous? Who's really dangerous? So you realize that it's not, it's not really that. It's that people are influenced by negative energy, by demonic and demons and entities every day. It's very subtle. And it can happen to any of us. And when does it happen? It happens when we're at the worst place, when somebody's upset us, abused us, when we've done something that we shouldn't have done, we've taken drugs or we've taken um, uh, a man in a white coat's uh, drugs and, and we've had alcohol or we're not eating properly or we're in a bad place and, and now we're gonna take it out on Mark. We're gonna attack him. We're gonna have a go at him. Why? Because you've got attachments, because you're angry because you're not happy in life. You're not fulfilled. You've not achieved what you believe you should be achieving. You're jealous, you're angry, you're bitter because your, your illness isn't getting better and you're frustrated. So you're gonna take it out on me because of what I've said. But all of these things is a reflection of yourself when you're angry. And when you're, when you're happy, it's a reflection of yourself. So if you're happy at me, that I, I'm, I'm, I'm like, no, no, you're, oh, Mark, you're so lovely. No, actually, you're so lovely. Mark, you're a pig. No, actually, you're a pig because you're calling me a pig. You're the pig. I'm not the pig. You're a monster. No, actually, you're a monster. Mark, you're, you're beautiful. No, no, you're beautiful. You see what I mean? So it's not, I'm not, it's both ways, good and bad. So if you're nasty to somebody, if you're evil to somebody, it's because you're evil and you might have attachments or a lot of the things that you just don't feel like you can move on in life. You don't feel like you can get any further. You've given up on you're just angry at life and you don't see an answer to anything and you don't want to do anything and you're lazy. So it's easier to attack and manipulate and to mock and ridicule. Or maybe you're just one of these monsters and you are very different from me. Maybe you enjoy attacking people. You spend all afternoon messing with people's, you know, posts and jumping on, and t t saying negative things, picking up the phone and being nasty and, and bitchy and stuff. Maybe you're not like me. Maybe you're not like us who are watching this now. Maybe you really are one of those monsters and it's not your fault. It's just where you come from. And I'm not having a go at you. I'm just saying, maybe you just are that person. 
or maybe you're not. Maybe you're not. But what I have seen and truly seen is I've seen the difference between two people that have stood next to me, both the same, exactly the same. In fact, twins are the same, two are twins. And somebody falls over. One of the twins runs over and picks the person up, the, the old lady up, picks her up. And you okay, his heart's nearly out of his mouth, panicking, worried. The other boy's laughing, loving it, wanting to see more blood, wanting to see the pain. They might come from the same moment, but what's inside that energy aura around them ain't the same. They come from different parts of the universe. So we're not all the same. We're all different. So going back to this understanding, it is important to understand that at any given moment, depending on how we're feeling, we can be disrupted. We could be attacked. So the chances are you're being attacked when you're working on yourself, exercising, when you're eating healthy, when you're working on your relationship, when you're working on yourself by looking at yourself, seeing what faults there is, what things that you've done in life that you may have made mistakes. We all are here to make mistakes. That's the whole point. So I made a mistake. Am I still living in that mistake? You know, am I living in fear? Am I living in worry? Am I living in the program? Am I living in the, the system thinking as it trained me to be? Am I unlearning? Am I working on myself? All of these things, if you work on yourself, Michael Jackson said it, you know, it starts with the man in the mirror. You've got to look at yourself and work on yourself. And all of these things, the people in your life, if they're causing you pain when you're with them, if they're saying nasty things, you've got to learn to break free and to build up and in the sense of building up either the confidence to be able to not let somebody affect you anymore by understanding why they're being nasty to you because they could be a monster and they want to feed from you or they're simply uh, trapped in the pain and suffering of the same conversation they can't get out of that conversation I haven't got enough I, I, I'm not good enough and, and, and so on and if you're always in that vibrating frequency of that person in a negative place, then if you're with them, the chances are that you could, if you're not strong enough, you'll find that you'll vibrate at their frequency. Now, you've got to understand that if you come from the same place as me, okay, which I believe is our spirit world, there are times that this body suit doesn't feel good. And it doesn't feel good because of what's sprayed upon us daily and we all know that now barium aluminium it's in the food it's in it's in fruit and vegetables that's why you need to have organic foods you need to really source your food now it's number one you need to source your food you need to know what's good for you to put inside your body and what is not good for you what if it's not good for you and you're feeling bad like i stopped drinking coffee i'm so glad i'm now drinking um natural uh cacao and I'm feeling great, I'm feeling strong, I'm sleeping better. So you, you're just adjusting yourself to get your energy level strong because your energy level is everything. If your energy is high, you cannot be penetrated by negative energy. And those numpties out there who are on the keyboard, warriors who never say it to your face, don't affect you as much. But when you're feeling down and le less energy, you haven't got enough energy to be strong enough to be able to you know, push that away. And thus you become into that energy and then they've got you and then they're stealing it from you. Now, I wanna tell you something that fascinated me a long time ago. I was sat doing a circle night and in that circle night, there was a lady at the far right hand side and she was sat there and I could see her energy leave her from her heart and it was leaving her and I was like, I wonder what, what's wrong and where was it leaving? It was going out of the room and I'm like, I'm watching this energy just leave and it was literally like a cloud going out and we were all meditating and I normally get up and do healing on everybody but I was so fascinated by this that at the end of the night I asked her a question because I didn't know what the hell that was. And I said to her, can I ask you, are you okay? She says, oh, Mac, I knew you'd know there was something wrong. And I'm like, well, I could feel it. And I actually could see your heart in pain. She says, I'm in so much pain. And I'm like, what's happened? She told me a personal story about something, about another, uh, let, let's say her best friend. Um, I don't want to say it because I know her and she's probably watching this. And what, what happened to her? 
was awful and what she did to her was awful and a friend she realized wasn't a nice person and she and 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 she started telling me she's always been jealous she's always been you know um kind of measuring herself and her, her her life and her husband to hers and 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 it just something really bad happened i wouldn't even tell you but i noticed that her energy was going out and i realized it was going and i said who were you thinking about she says i was thinking about her so then I realized, shit, that when we think about people who hurt us, we're feeding them, we're giving them what they want. And skip on a couple more years later and uh, I went through something traumatic with my first teacher who got extremely jealous when I started doing well. And she tried to hold me back or like a lot of teachers, you only do what I tell you to do. And she wouldn't allow me to fly. Uh, and by the way, I'm a guide and a teacher for thousands of people and I tell them to fly. And when they do 50, 100, 10,000 times more successful and better than me, I am the most proudest person in the world. So again, I am not one of these because we don't feed from that. We don't feed from I need, I want, you need to follow me. I need you, I need you, you, you give me your power. No, 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 no. Fly, do what you feel is right spread your wings, you are the power. So difference, they're not like me. That person's not like me, that's a monster. Now I call them monsters, but they're not monsters. They're simply different energy frequencies that live in these bodies. So you've got to recognize them. You've got to know who they are. And how you know who they are is by their actions. Because anybody can speak, but you can see by their actions. That's when you really know who they are what they're doing there are you know just little things just the little things that's that why would you do that why would you you know i mean I, i've mentioned my first teacher she's passed now but she'd spend hours by the tv watching all the famous uh, mediums and psychics and she'd be angry and furious what's it like what's wrong with you what what why why are you watching it what why are you so angry at them right so it's like you, you, certain people feed from certain things, okay? So it's a feeding, it's a form of feeding. It's not, it's not anger, they're feeding from it. They're looking for something to feed from. So they're wanting, so you'll find that, um, it happened to me as a child, the first thing, I'm gonna write this in a book, my first experience of a monster was no more than four or five years old and I was playing in a sandpit in the local kindergarten and this little boy same age maybe a year older than me came up to me with an actual hammer found a hammer and just smashed me over the head with a hammer the blood ran down my face and i'm watching this child i was in shock and i'm a child watching this other kid laughing and he was picked up by the teacher and he was laughing and our blood was dripping that was the first ever moment that i realized that they walk amongst us and there are monsters in this world Again, I make this video because I know I'm gonna be attacked because of the spiritual community. We are all one, no we're not. Please don't say that, I am not one. His consciousness who rapes children as much as he can is not like my consciousness. He does not come from the same place as I do. And also the God community, the Bible community. We are, we are all made in, in the, the image of God, no we're not. Maybe the spacesuits are but not what goes inside them. What goes inside them comes from all over the universe and there are many different consciousness all over. And if we could embrace this really powerful understanding, the world would change. Now you would say, yeah, but that makes us all separate and we have to be, then we'll be fearful of everything. No, we just, we actually, it makes sense then when we are in conflict with people that we think are like us, they're not like us. And I've got over that now and it doesn't affect me anymore when somebody kills somebody and, or rapes somebody. Yeah, yeah, well, they're not like me. That's, that is a monster. And that's easier for me. Now I understand, I get it. They're monsters and that's what they feed from. So, you know, I think it's important and it's something that nobody that I've ever heard speak about. And the reason why I speak about this is, and I speak about it differently. And the reason why I speak differently is because I don't read books. I've got dyslexia and dyspraxia. All I shared with you is the thousands of clients that have laid down in front of a table, uh, a healing bed, and I've healed them 
uh, or they've gone away and come back and gone away and come back different clients and I'm learning and, and you understand certain people who come like I've had politicians come to me for readings they're not like you and me that isn't that that consciousness isn't nothing like me and I've had people who've come to me from high high levels of of authority they're nothing like you and me they're a diff there that's a different energy so when you understand this, there are certain entities that are flying around attaching to us, but there's also entities which are inside these bodies. So what is an entity? It's a consciousness. What is energy? It's a consciousness. Now you might say it's not. It's taken me a while to understand this. And I was in this room when I truly, truly understood it. So, there was a girl who came from Morocco and she'd heard about my healing work. I'd retired, but there was a knock at the door. My healing bed was still here. I decided from my book, if you read my book, you know why I'd just come back. Um, I don't know how long, I can't remember the time, don't hold me to it, but anyway, she knocked on the door. She was black and blue. I said, come in, laid down, gave her a healing session. After the healing session, she got up. A uh, father was, our father or father-in-law was waiting outside for her. He said, thank you. They went. Um, within a spate of 15 minutes, I started getting a pain right here in my back. A real pain, real bad pain. It's like, fuck, that really hurts. It's like somebody just need me here and it was killing and I'm like, this is this is negative energy. This is this something's attached, right? At that particular time, I got uh, some oil. Just I got some oil there, right? And it's called. It, I just created it, and I created it by sitting here with a friend, and we were meditating. Anyway, wrote it down. It was written down. It was um, sage, frankincense, and Palo Santo. Mix them together, and this will be a sacred oil. Wow. Okay, so it'd been two or three months. Some of you who watch my videos will know this to be true because that was the process I went through just doing videos, sharing it with you. So I went there and thought, okay, straight away my mind says, sacred oil. Okay, sacred oil. I'll, I'll, I, I would have normally have gone for the healing oil, which is that one there. But I went for the sacred oil. I was a little bit nervous as well because is it going to work? Isn't it going to work, right? Because my mind's thinking... So I took some of the oil and I rubbed it exactly where that pain was. And I swear to God, this was the, the moment that everything fitted into place that I never really truly understood. The feeling of that, because I don't normally get any attachment or pain or negative energy. So this was a heavy, this was heavy. She'd been beaten black and blue by her boyfriend. So I, I got that energy and it's here. And as soon as I rubbed that oil here, it went across to the other side, it moved. And when I say moved, it's not like, oh, I feel it here now. It's like that frigging energy just moved. It literally knew that I'd rubbed the oil on and it moved to the other side. So instinctively without, this is what my thoughts, I quickly got more, rubbed it all over my body and it just disappeared. It went. It, my pain gone. Gone. No more pain. It's It went there, but it's gone. It's, it's gone. I'm like, oh my God, it works. I mean, the oil works. It works. But the most important thing, the final piece to the puzzle of energy was realizing that energy is a consciousness. Your thought is turned into an energy which becomes a consciousness. Negative energy, when you think about negative energy, turns into a consciousness and has a life of its own and it can move and it can go anywhere. Now, you need to ponder on this. This, this is something where a guru would stop speaking just to let you think, I don't do that much. I should do, but I'm not a guru. I'm, I'm, I'm just somebody who shares what my experience Gurus are very clever. They just, they say something and make you think about it and ponder on it. I'm not very good at that. I talk too much anyway, as you can quite clearly tell. Uh, 44 minutes talking all the way through. It's pretty, pretty um, awesome, right? If you, if you want to talk. Anyway, so where was I? Shut up, Mark. 
Talk about stopping the flow. So knowing that the energy that you create is positive, if you create a positive thought, it can move freely amongst your body and it can attach to people and heal them. If you think of a negative thought, it can attach to your body parts and start giving you cancerous energy, bad, very, very dis-ease energy. Or it can leave you and give it to somebody else. That's pretty profound. So now you can understand why I'm very careful who I sit with. Now you can understand who, I'm, who I want to be with, who I, what I want to listen to on the internet because there is no space and time. Like that woman in the circle night, the energy went straight to that other person and she was 10 miles away. She lived, you know, 15 minutes away from where she was. Therefore, there is no space and time. Energy can be anywhere at any given moment. So if, I, if you're thinking of me now with love, you are sending me love and I'm feeling it and I'll get up and think that was a good video. Why? Or that was a good healing uh, session. Or that was a good talk I just gave to people. Why? Because I'm feeling great. And there's people out there who understand this. There are people, there are, there, they are the older generation who understand this. I'll give you a great example. There were times that I would do circle nights and there might be too many people for me to deal with. And it was like, okay, there's like 300 people in this room. What am I going to do? It's like, how can I really do this? And, and like, and then all of a sudden, like magic, when I start the room, I could feel certain people helping me. And at the end of the night, I swear to God, I'd go up to people and hug them. And I'd say, I really appreciate your help tonight. And they'd smile and say, you're most welcome. I'm like, fuck. Wow. So I guess I didn't go into detail as much as I wanted to, because I didn't want to make it too negative. But let me tell you, the most important thing you can do right now is give good thoughts, is be positive, is be healthy, is be as kind as you can, Clean, cleanse your environment, you know, get beautiful crystals that vibrate at a great frequency. Morsitz it is freaking amazing if you think you're always being attacked by entity. Wear Morsitz it, whether it's a ring, whether it's in your pocket, Morsitz it is beautiful, it's great. Nice cleansing oils, any kind of nice oils like Paolo Santo, like sage, Sage is fantastic, it really is. And sage to burn in a room, the smoke, is that what clears negative energy in and around you? Honestly, Paolo Santo is another one. Fabulous for cleansing rooms. That's why this room is beautiful. I've had people walk into this academy crying. They just have to stop. You have to stop and they cry because they've never felt energy like it. Why? Well, I cleanse the room. I, I, I work on crystals, I, I put love into things. And good energy is vital. So you have to think about how to keep your energy strong, which is all about what you're thinking and what you're putting into your mouth. It's so important and what you're not putting into your mouth, of course. So the room, cleansing a room of, you know, using sage or Palo Santo, cleansing your body using natural oils, having certain crystals that vibrate at a frequency that will help protect, heal, strengthen music Music, why do you think when when there's Tavistock and all these people, there's all such negative, dark, satanic symbolisms, negativity. Why is everybody like, because it feeds from them, it feeds from them. It really does. It wants to create the most awful frequency that you vibrate at and then you create this frequency that feeds from you. Don't feed, don't feed the monsters. That's my message today. Don't feed the monsters. Don't feed the monsters. Feed your energy. Feed good people. Feed people like you and I by love and kindness. That's all we can do. It's a hard, it's a hard one. It's not easy. It won't, won't take a day. It won't take a week, a month, a year. It's a full lifetime. It's a way of life. But each day that you become better, each day that you become more positive, each day that you take the steps towards health, well-being, and spiritual awareness about what I've shared with you today, ah, now I get it. Now I know why I need to do these things. And what Mark says, whether I believe half of it or not, 
makes sense to be a better person, makes sense to not be around people who are not very nice, makes sense to not feel bad because I don't want other people to feel bad and I certainly don't want to feed the monsters. These things are just very natural, but unfortunately being hidden from us deliberately. And I wish you the best and I'm not asking you to subscribe and I'm not, I'm not asking you to be my friend. I just want you to embrace what I've shared. I'm not asking you to buy any crystals or oils from me. I just, I want you to embrace, even if it's one thing that'll help you today along this journey. And maybe there might be a penny drop moment or a piece of the jigsaw today that helps you along your journey. That's all I've ever wanted. And if you feel me, you know it's the truth. So from my heart to yours, I'm going to cry. <laughs> Love you all. Take care.